<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome in. Hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, you know what? I got a really great vlog planned out for you guys. I have so many favorite comments of the week that I am I am really looking forward to the comments of the week section this week. I got a whole mess of news to talk about. We're going to have some beer tasting that was actually done at night, which is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I say this a lot and I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Sometimes my schedule dictates it so that I have to shoot my vlog during the daytime. And today's one of those days. You guys know me. I love shooting my vlogs at night. I like having like a different feel, like a different vibe to the vlog. It's like a nighttime program. Unfortunately, this week I wasn't able to do that just because of my schedule. I injured myself. Damn it, I freaking injured my ankle. And it's not even like a fun, cool, or exciting story. All I was doing was walking the dog and it was raining in San Diego and we got inside and we got to the apartment lobby and the whole lobby's tile, like white, slippery, deaf tile. And I took one wrong step and boom, right on my ass, I heard a very, very loud pop sound, like pop, like my ankle just went Fuck you. I hobbled back up to the apartment. I really thought it was broken. I went to the urgent care the next day to get an x-ray. It turns out it's not broken. It was just severely sprained. And so I'm walking around with a freaking cane. You see this? I got a prescription for a cane and now I'm walking around with a cane. But what are you gonna do? You you hobble around and you, and you try to adapt and you try to move forward. But uh, yeah, we got a great vlog. Let me just jump in here. Let me grab my vlog notes out and see what's going on. First thing I have written down here, oh, YouTube sucks. Yeah, dude, YouTube sucks so bad. YouTube, YouTube just sucks. A lot of people are getting their comments marked as spam from either YouTube or other users. I've said this a lot before, but in every video, there's probably a hundred comments that don't show up because they got marked as spam. Not even marked as spam. In my little back end, it says potentially spam. Like YouTube took it upon themselves to go, oh, well, this guy could be spam. Nine times out of 10, they're not spam. So if you comment on a video and it doesn't show up, then that's why I've been trying my hardest to go through all of my newest recent video uploads, like all the Tuesday Bro Tuesdays and all of the most recent vlog videos and mark the ones that YouTube thinks is spam as not spam, as like, these are okay. So hopefully in the future, YouTube knows that I marked those as non-spam so that they'll actually get posted to the video. That sucks as well. A lot of people have been emailing me saying that YouTube is unsubscribing them from my YouTube channel. That is ridiculous. It's a thing. It's an actual thing that's happening. YouTube's algorithms are all screwed up beyond repair. So if you wanna get notifications, go to my channel page. There's a little bell, you click on the bell and you'll get upload notifications. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, then subscribe. Additionally, from what everybody on YouTube is telling me, all of the YouTubers that I watch, if you like this video, just, just like it. Just go down there and smash the like button. It helps out with my SEO and it helps YouTube recommend my videos to people that would normally get recommended to these types of videos. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on with YouTube. It's driving me insane. And uh, as, long as, as long as my subscribers are here and able to watch my videos, then that's really all that I care about. But YouTube's like unsubscribing people. And it happened to me. I have been subscribed to Mr. Sunday Movies is one of my favorite YouTubers. I've been subscribed to Chris Stuckman for a long time. The other day I went on YouTube and I was no longer subscribed to Chris Stuckman. And I was like, nope, I have been subscribed to Chris Stuckman for like well over a year now. And YouTube kind of took it upon themselves, I guess, to unsubscribe me from Chris Stuckman. So my apologies to Chris Stuckman. You are the best movie reviewer on YouTube and I damn well should be subscribed to you. And for some reason, YouTube didn't do that. So, or YouTube unsubscribed me. Anyway, that pisses me off. YouTube sucks. YouTube sucks. Oh, Toonie. Okay, so next thing I have uh, written down here is Toonie. Mr. Toonie, uh, Toonie219 over there on the Instagram. He sent me a DM telling me about a raffle that is going on right now. The hashtag CP4R2B. This is 
coil porn for right to be. This is a raffle fundraiser to win a bunch of prizes and to donate money to the right to be smoke free coalition like I've done in the past with my raffles. He wrote to me and said, Nick, this ends on Sunday, this Sunday. So today is Thursday, it ends this Sunday. So if you can fit it into Thursday vlog, that would be perfect. It is hashtag CP4R2B coil porn for right to be on Instagram. Twisted Messes, EKG, MTurk, Adore, Li Adore E-Liquid, Squirming Coils, three of my modded K funds, and the Constibulary, Brittany's mommy vapes husband. Lots of coils, liquids, and mods are getting given away. Uh, you enter by buying a $5 raffle ticket via PayPal, no limit. All money goes to the right to be smoke-free coalition lawsuit. So what I'm gonna do is just post a link in the description to the original giveaway post. It's gonna have all the details. You use the hashtag CP4R2B. You donate $5 through PayPal for the right to be smoke-free coalition. Then you get entered and you get to win, uh, you know, kind of a bunch of cool stuff. And I think that's awesome. I love fundraisers for advocacy. Tooney219 is a super great guy. He is super talented coil builder, although he will not bring brag about himself, but he is a really good coil builder and he does those heat treated modded K funds. I have three or four of them now, I think at this point, and they are super dope, but it uh, looks like you can win some Twisted Messes stuff, some MTurk stuff, some EKG coils, a Door E-Liquid. That's very, very cool. So I'll post a link down in the description where you can check out more information about that. Uh, another thing I have written on here, it just says the turd comment. Oh yeah, okay, so someone, I, evidently there was another YouTube reviewer um, that uh, had posted on Facebook in a vaping group that myself and Ruby Roo, uh, he called us turds. And I don't know, I mean, I don't care. A lot of people had messaged me and emailed me about this, like, you know that this guy, he's calling you a turd? And I'm like, I don't care, like that's, whatever it is it's whatever i don't really care um if you feel the need to build yourself up by tearing someone else down then you're just a dick like that's all i don't care a lot of people have said a lot worse things about me and someone going on facebook into a facebook group and calling me a turd ah <laughs> fuck off i don't care i don't like i really don't <laughs> I don't have time to, to fuck around with that or to get involved in any vape drama and I'm not gonna call the guy out and he's probably gonna continue to call me a turd and if that's what he wants to do, then you know what? Damn it, we live in a free country and he is absolutely allowed to go on Facebook and call me a turd. I, I could not give any less fucks. I do have some actual, actual news as well. There was a great article that, well, who sent this to me? A fellow named Matt sent this to me. Additionally, I've seen it up posted on Facebook since, but this is an article from The Guardian and the big headline of this article in The Guardian is, I'll say it again, e-cigarettes are still far safer than smoking. And this is quite a long article. January is a time for New Year's resolutions, and if you're one of the world's one billion smokers, your resolution may be to stop smoking. For some people, this year's quit attempt might involve an electronic cigarette, and in a recent study in England published in the BMJ suggests that these devices helped at least 18,000 smokers stop in 2015 who would not otherwise have done so. That's very good news, but will there be as many quit attempts in 2017 as there have been in the past with e-cigarettes, I'm not so sure. This was written by a lady named Linda Bald, B-A-U-L-D. I, I have no idea who this person is. And like I said, it's a really long article, but it's actually really well, very well done. Towards the middle of this, she says, more people believe today compared with a year ago that e-cigarettes are as harmful as smoking. More people today believe that e-cigarettes are as harmful as smoking. In fact, these incorrect perceptions have risen year over year from fewer than one in 10 adults in Great Britain in 2013 to one in four this past summer. Survey of smokers show similar patterns with an increasing proportion believing that e-cigarettes are more or equally harmful than tobacco. There are people that believe that e-cigarettes are more 
harmful than tobacco. She goes on to say, we know that these harm perceptions are wrong. There is now very strong evidence from a range of studies that vaping, inhaling nicotine without the combustion involved in smoking is far less risky than smoking cigarettes. Just a few months ago, this body of evidence was brought together by the Royal College of Physicians who published an authoritative report analyzing dozens of studies and concluded that the hazard to health airing from long-term vapor inhalation from e-cigarettes is unlikely to exceed 5% of the harm from smoking tobacco. Yes, yes, this is stuff that we know. Yes, Royal College of Physicians, even with this information out there, there are still people that believe that vaping electronic cigarettes is more or just as harmful as traditional combustible tobacco. I, I can't. I can't even. She wraps it up by saying, I believe that e-cigarettes have the potential to save lives by providing an alternative to smoking. Yet this can only be realized if we address negative harm perceptions and communicate honestly with the public. Ongoing research can help with this. And 2016 has seen the start of important studies, many commissioned by Cancer Research UK, which will tell us more about the future. We also need to keep our eye on new technology, such as heat not burn tobacco products, which are emerging and about which we know very little. Only time will tell whether the UK's positive approach towards e-cigarette strikes the right balance between risks and benefits. For now, however, we must do all we can to encourage smokers to try to stop at New Year or any other time. For those trying with e-cigarettes, this is a positive choice that should be supported. Yes, Great article, unbelievable uh, unbelievable article. It says Linda Bald, oh now it tells us who Linda Bald is. No more, no more wondering who is Linda Bald. Linda Bald is a professor of health policy at the University of Stirling, deputy director of the UK Center for Tobacco and Alcohol Studies and holds the CRUK BUPA Chair in Behavioral Research for Cancer Profession Prevention at Cancer Research UK. She is a former scientific advisor on tobacco control in the UK government and chaired the NICE Guidance Group on Tobacco Harm Reduction. Holy crap, that, that is a long resume. Because of that resume, I'm inclined to believe the words that Linda Bald has written here in this Guardian article, which is great. I will be posting a link to it down in the description below for you to read and share with your vapey friends and your non-vapey friends and just kind of share it all over the place because it's a really great article. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was I want to give just the most unbelievable thank you, uh, thumbs up, all the banana stickers to all of my subscribers. Uh, Guide to Vaping did their best of 2016 uh, event again. I believe I only mentioned it in one vlog and I actually got first place in a lot of these categories, which I mean, completely, completely blows me away. I truly do believe in what I'm doing here, not just on YouTube, but through my businesses, through social media, on Instagram and on Facebook. I love vaping, I love this community, and I love connecting with other vapers. I love connecting with my subscribers. I love connecting with people. So we're just gonna go over real quick, quack? I can't believe I said that again. <laughs> We're just gonna go over real quick uh, the guide to vaping, best of 2016. Uh, most popular vendor was Vape Wild. Uh, I've actually never shopped with Vape Wild, so there you go. Now I'll have to give them a shot. Best customer service, Vape Wild. Best vape prices, Vape Wild. Best vape prices, China. Fast Tech. Best e-liquid brand, Vape Wild. They are sweeping this event. Best e-liquid flavor is Mad Scope from Scope Juice. Has anybody had this juice? I've honestly, truly and honestly never heard of this juice before. I feel like since it was voted the best e-liquid flavor of 2016, that I should probably give it a try. The second place was Adore e-liquid banana bondage, which I have had, which is very delicious. Have you ever had scope juice? Mad scope from scope juice? Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had scope juice and how good it is because if it's on there, I feel like I should get some. Best product manufacturer. First place was Smoke Tech. Best regulated vape mod, the Smoke Alien mod, which I have not tried. I I, I lost my relationship with Smoke Tech. Um, I had a contact at Smoke Tech that I talked to in the past about doing reviews and getting products and stuff like that, and then they just stopped contacting me, so eh, I, I don't know. I just kind of gave up on, uh, on Smoke Tech. 
Uh, best unregulated vape mod was BJ Box Mods Broadside. Is that the one that I have? I have a BJ's Box Mods. Is that the one that I have? Is that the one that Pickle stole from me? Wow, that that's interesting. That could be, that's an interesting thing. Best Clearomizer, Smoke Tech TF V8. Best Sub Ohm Tank, Smoke Tech TF V8. Best RDA, The Goon. I mean, of course, you gotta give it up to The Goon. The Goon is, I mean, The Goon is awesome. The Goon's so fucking cool. What I am most excited about is third place. Grim Green, Omboyosi, Recoil RDA. Ooh, that makes me, that more than anything makes me so happy. You guys have no idea the level of stress it was like getting this RDA really like fine tuned the way we wanted it, getting the airflow the way we wanted it, getting the deck the way we wanted it and putting all this stock and just your whole life into this RDA and releasing it and not knowing whether or not people were even gonna like it. Like, I knew that I liked it and Dwayne knew that he liked it, but releasing a product, it's a very nerve wracking experience. And I am over freaking joyed that we got third place, best of 2016. And I am overjoyed that people genuinely enjoy this RDA. That just, I mean, thank you so much, everybody. I, I, I that, that just makes my whole day. Best RTA, Geek Vape Griffin RTA. Best RDTA is the iJoy Limitless. Best YouTube channel for entertainment. Fuck yeah, Grim Green. There we go, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm even more excited about the next category than I am about myself winning. Best YouTube Vape channel for technical. DJ LSB Vapes, woo, Daniel, congratulations. That's awesome, that's all I wanted from the best of 2016. I don't care if people voted for me, I don't care if people voted for the Recoil RDA, the fact that, actually I do care a little bit if you vote for the Recoil RDA, that made me really happy, but what I wanted most from this was Daniel DJ LSB Vapes to win the best vape YouTube channel for technical. Best vape YouTube overall? Yes, Crim Green, what? This is the one that really blows me away. Best Instagram page, Grim Green. That doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense. I love my Instagram and I take my social media very seriously, but I cannot believe that I got first place on best Instagram over Vape Wild and over Vape Porn. Vape Porn is the biggest Instagram page. And I guess biggest doesn't mean the best, but I, I always see it as like, they have way more, Vape Porn has way more followers than me, but uh, you guys voted me best Instagram page. That's kind of unbelievable. Um, it goes on best uh, deals blog is Vapor Joe's, best vape forum is Vaping Underground, best vape network is Vaping Underground, best vape show is Vaping Underground, best vape convention, ECC VPX, I would definitely agree with that. Best vape organization in first place, CASA. I think CASA has been the best vape organization since they've started this. Um, vaping's biggest supporter, Grim Green. I can't even, I can't even wrap my head around what that means. I've said this before, at the end of the day, I'm just a guy in a hat that really, really fucking loves vaping. And I love it. I believe in vaping more than I've believed in most anything else in my life. It is a powerful, powerful tool. It's something that brings people together. And there's so many great aspects about it from the community and modders and coil builders and juice makers and and the whole aspect of helping smokers, tobacco harm reduction, I really believe in it. Thank you. I mean, vaping's biggest supporter, that's huge, unbelievable, and most popular vapor. Most popular vapor is fun, but it doesn't, I mean, that's cool. I, you know what? Fuck it. I love it. I think it's awesome. Most popular vapor, absolutely. Grim Green, uh, and then Vapor Joe, and then Mike Vapes. And Mike Vapes is a super solid dude. I've only got to meet him once. On one single occasion, I've got to meet uh, Mike Vapes, and uh, he's he's a very popular vapor as well. So there you go. That's the best of 2017. That's taken up way too much freaking time. So right now, I just want to talk real quick about what I've been vaping. And last week, I had asked some people to, hey, if you got a theme music or a video or something for what I've been vaping, then uh, send it over. And one of my subscribers by the name of Alan uh, sent me this. Loading video data, Grim Green Industries, processing. One section found, processing. 
Preparing video for playback. Now playing. What I've been vaping. Penguin Industries. Which I love. I may or may not use it. I actually do really like that. And a fella named James sent me this. And I love it. And I think I might use this as like my what I've been vaping like intro music. But I'm going to play it from my phone because I like it so much. It's so great. <laughs> that is so great, James. That is so freaking great. I love it. But yeah, real quick, I just want to talk about what I've been vaping. Uh, me one never leaves my side. It's uh, I've plowed through like 30 mils of juice in this, which for a mouth to lung, that is a lot of juice. I love the Mi One. It's got a great battery life. It's got a nice big tank on the inside. Whenever I go anywhere, if I go to a rock show or a bar or out to dinner or to Disneyland or to anywhere, Mi One. I brought this with me when I went to New York City. I was there for like five days and I brought this along with other mods, but all I vaped really the whole time I was there was the Mi One. Uh, it's fantastic. This is 18 milligram uh, Atlanta Peach Leaf from the Amber Juice Classics line. It's a 50-50 PGVG blend, so it works really well in these kind of mouth to lung tanks. Uh, I just love it. Oh, the throat hit though. That's what I love. I love that throat hit. Additionally, I've been using the Noisy Cricket 2 a lot. I took this with me to New York as well. I've got it topped with the Cosmonaut RDA, which I'm going to be reviewing very, very soon. In fact, I'm going to give the Cosmonaut its own video. We're going to throw it up on a wildcard Wednesday. I love that I can use my DHD goon caps in it. I love the deck. I love the airflow. I kind of love most everything about this. Been vaping a uh, Grim Green Signature vlog day out of this, and it's just a fantastic vape. This is a little bit on the low side. It's like a 0.12, I believe. So I've been running the Noisy Cricket 2 in parallel, unregulated parallel mode, and this is a stellar, stellar vape. Super good, just really good. Um, Boss Genesis drama. Look, I know there was some drama with the Boss Genesis between Vaporized Nomads and Daniel, and look, just stop it. Just stop being dramatic. Uh, I, Vaporized Nomads probably could have handled it a little bit better. Um, as a reviewer, I know that Daniel, Mr. DJ LSB Vapes, I know that he can only review what he has in front of him. So if he had something that was faulty, and even if the company replaces it, the viewers still need to know that the first unit was faulty. If I was doing a review and I got a Mi 1 that was faulty, and then they replaced it, I would say the first me one I got was faulty, but the company replaced it and the second one I got has been working perfectly. That's something that does need to be communicated. So I'm not on a side. I'm not picking teams here. I consider Daniel DJ LSB Vapes a friend of mine. I've hung out with him on multiple, multiple occasions. He came to the squad house at ECC and just hung out with all of us. And it, it was great. That goes a long way in my book. But with that said, my Vaporized Nomads, Boss Genesis, uh, with um, the Grim Green DHD fire and our collaboration logo on there. Mine has worked flawlessly. It has never let me down. It's one of my favorite mods that I used this year, and I think it's just great. I don't know why I'm popping this off. That's because I have to drip. Got it topped with the Squid Dude RDA from the Tuesday Bro Tuesday Review Queue. I still haven't rebuilt it. I promised that I would rebuild it, and I have not rebuilt it yet, but I've got some Coil Spill, RKOI from Coil Spill in here. The vape I'm getting from this dude RDA is just stellar. Really super good. This is a 0.11, and I have it set to about 120 watts right now. It's, it's delivering on every level. Second to last, I got rid of my Christmas Christmas setup, and now it's back to black and red and black and red. Uh, Hexum 3.0, I put the Red Grim Army door on there. Uh, red recoil. I have some GM coils. These are polished aliens on the inside, which I never saw the point of polished coils until I started using them. And polished coils are much, much easier to clean. They're much easier to dry burn. You can run it under, you can dry burn it, run it underwater, and then take a little toothbrush and like, you know, uh, like scrub them, give them a little bit of a scrub down, and they come out looking 
pristine. Every single time I re-wick this atomizer, the coils look brand freaking new. I find that they are much easier to clean. Uh, fairy wings. Yes, I'm vaping a fuck ton of fairy wings. I haven't, it's not even noticeable in that big bottle. Some people were saying that it's going to be gone by March. It is not going to be gone by March. I will be surprised if that giant bottle of juice is gone by like June. It might even be longer than that. I've been vaping it as much as I can, and it's not even making a dent in that giant liter bottle, but it's Fairy Wings. I have a color-changing DHD cap on top, which turns from red to white, which is just cool. It's just super cool, and it's kind of like a thing that I'll look at. Like, if I'm vaping and vaping, like the other night, I, I was... I was, st I was, you know, relegated to the couch because of my ankle and I had my foot elevated with ice on it and I'm just vaping and vaping and vaping. And then I look down and my drip tip turned white and it was really hot and turned white and I go, okay, well maybe that's my sign to like put it down, wait till it turns red again and now I can vape it. But this is just one of my all time favorite vapes that will kind of never go away. Unless the batteries are dying which the batteries are definitely dying in this, so I need to replace them. Yeah, these batteries are dead. Dead batteries, woo! And lastly, I've been vaping this rig box mod, which is, I've talked about this before, it's basically a Surik box. I put uh, the Grim Green DHD sticker on there, but it's got the rig on the front, it's got a potentiometer on the side, and it's got a button here. I've been rocking that with that Twisted Messes square atomizer, which, is interesting. Every square mod I've put it on, I can get it to sit square. He's got a little squishy o-ring on the 510 thread so you can i have to crank it down a little bit farther than maybe i normally would but i can get it to sit square and like really solidly flush on here i have the airflow fully open no more whistling i got this filled with rainbow sherbet in the dark really interesting vape really good vape i don't like this drip tip i wish with all my wishes that he had just done a round drip tip instead of a square drip tip because it's a round hole and it could have been rounded and then squared and then kind of come to a more rounder point on top but it's a small gripe it does come with a drip tip adapter i just haven't found a really good drip tip that i like using in this rda uh, anything smaller kind of cuts off the airflow but anyway really still a really good vape So yeah, that's what I have been vaping. Um, I do have a retro vaping segment prepared for later. And I don't have a review for a thing that never got a review. We're gonna do retro vaping, but uh, we got a whole bunch of first impressions, like actual, actual first impressions, kind of like the last vlog. But what we're gonna do right now is time travel. We're gonna go right over there to the beer section. Well, let's taste some freaking beer. The beer that I have tonight, I've, I've really been looking forward to this beer. This beer comes from New Belgium. And I first saw this on Facebook and a bunch of people had like posted it to my wall and been like, Nick, check out this beer, check out this beer, check out this beer. And yeah, it's a collaboration between New Belgium and my single favorite band of all time. Let me get the, let me get the strings out of the way. Clutch. It's a collaboration ale between Clutch and New Belgium. New Belgium is an amazing brewery. They make, honestly, some of my favorite beers on earth, and they teamed up with my favorite band on earth, Clutch, to make a beer. So even if it sucks, even if I don't like it, I'm still going to like it. I mean, there's no way. Even if this just tastes like gorilla urine, I'm still going to be like, well, it, it's a clutch beer, so uh, I, I, I still think I like it. So let's just get into this beer. Uh, it's described as a wood-aged imperial sour stout, which... I like stouts and I sometimes like sour beers. Uh, I'm not sure how this uh, sour stout is going to play out for me, but needless to say, I'm obviously really excited to try it. Um, Dwayne, Mr. Dwayne, Omboy OC, uh, you know, my, just my BFF bromance, Dwayne, and his amazing wife, Katie, they they hooked it up with some with this bottle of beer. And I 
couldn't be more excited about it. I figured first first vlog of the new year, let's taste some let's taste some clutch beer. So this is a 8.5% alcohol by volume. I have not had much to eat today and I certainly haven't had dinner. So, you know, when you're on an empty stomach, drinking an 8.5% alcohol by volume beer is, is always a fantastic idea, right? I'm gonna be pouring this not over my keyboard into a tulip style ga uh, tulip style. Pardon me, what? Grim Army Tulip Style Glass. Um, everything I've read about this beer, it's kind of a mixed bag. They say it pours very, very dark. A lot of people describe it as ink black. And yeah, dude, that is, uh, <laughs> look at that. That is a super, super dark beer. There's a nice little sort of tan head on top. Kind of reminds me of the way like uh, a Guinness would pour with that thick finger of foam on top. But uh, let's try this. I'm really excited. New Belgium, clutch, wood aged imperial sour stout. Cheers. Here's to you vloggers. Um, uh, really very super bizarre. Really very super bizarre. Um, it's got a very nice stouty characteristic. It's not as sour as I thought it would be. I thought it would be a lot more on the sour side, but what I get out of this beer is chocolate covered cherries. It's got a very strong like chocolatey coffee flavor with some like low notes, a few low notes in there of like dark cherries. It's got like, it reminds me, it honestly reminds me of chocolate covered cherries. In fact, if I had like a chocolate covered cherry juice, which I know, who does the chocolate covered cherry juice? I had one recently that was really good. Who made that juice? I want to say that it was Lonnie. I think it was Lonnie. Does Lonnie make a chocolate covered cherry juice? Anyway, if he does, that would pair amazing with this. Looking at my table, I truly and honestly don't know what I have to pair with this beer. So I'm trying to think of what, what can I pair with this? I'm gonna go to Yig. I'm gonna go to the Grim Colt Yig uh, in the Hadley RDA sitting on top of the Honey Badger. That's generally a good sort of all around beer tasting juice that I like to pair with certain beers. Although the chocolate cherry flavors and notes that I'm getting from this beer, I don't think, uh, I don't think Yig's gonna cut it, but you know what? Hell, let's give it a try. Meh, meh, it's, it's fine, it's okay. This beer actually makes the juice taste sweeter than it really is. Yig is like uh, an oatmeal cookie sort of custard type of flavor and when I pair it with this beer, being that this beer is sour and chocolatey, it actually makes the oatmeal cookie component of this juice taste a lot more, uh, a lot stronger than it uh, than it normally does on its own. I don't know, fairy wings? Maybe r and Vapors fairy wings? Lord knows I have a mountain of it. I should be vaping it 24 seven. Let's try some fairy wings. Got the fairy wings in a recoil RDA in my black on red on black on red setup that I just love so much. Let's try fairy wings. Let's try it with this clutch. Eh. It's fine. It's okay. This is going to be a really difficult beer to like find a really good pairing with with something maybe really tart or even I swear I had recently a chocolate covered cherry juice that tasted like really good dark chocolate over like a very natural cherry flavor and I want to say it was Lonnie that gave it to me. I want to say that it was Lonnie that gave it to me, but I don't remember. And as it stands on my desk, I got, let's try this. Let's try the me one. Let's try Atlanta peach leaf tobacco. Why not? Because peaches and tobacco. Nah, nope. That's probably actually the worst one that I've ever tried. This beer is really super unique. I'm really enjoying tasting it. I thought it was gonna be more sour than it is. It's actually a little bit more on the stouty side than on the sour side, but the mix of the two, the sour stout gives it a really good chocolate cherry flavor. And it's such a unique beer that it's gonna be, it's gonna be really hard to find a good, 
vape pairing with this. So anyway, yeah, it is what it is. Shout out once again to Mr. Omboy OC and his amazing wife, Katie, for hooking up uh, the new Belgium Clutch Brew. At the very least, I'm just going to save this bottle forever. This bottle will never, ever ever go into the trash can. I'm going to finish this beer and I'm going to display that. I'm going to frame it. I'm going to frame this freaking bottle of beer. Now nah, that's a little bit ridiculous, but I do love clutch and I do love beer. And those two worlds coming together just makes me one happy grim green. Anyway, that's what I got right now for the beer segment. And I know right after the beer segment, it is time to do some shout outs. It is shout out. All right, so let's do a couple shout outs. I had one shout out or two shout outs that were screen captures from YouTube. A guy named David Schweitzer just said, shout out, please, Nick. Love the videos. Yeah, absolutely, David. Boom, pound it. You're, you're definitely shouted out. Had another one from YouTube as well. This one was Shuffin Vapes. Oh, that's right. I tried to find your YouTube Shuffin Vapes. So. If you want to email it over to me, nick at grimgreen.com, so I can click on it, I will check out your videos. He said, hey, Grim Green, my name is Devin, and you've been a huge inspiration for me, and I'm trying to get started reviewing. I'd love a shout-out on your next vlog and any tips you might have for me starting a review channel. Uh, absolutely, you are shouted out. Please send me a link to your review channel, and I will definitely check it out. I always like giving constructive criticisms back to vapey, reviewy you know, people and stuff like that. Uh, I do have some more shout outs here. Uh, Jose wrote to me and said, bro, can you please shout out my girlfriend? I'm going to mispronounce your name. I'm going to mispronounce your girlfriend's name. Fatima. Is that right? That's not right. I think it's Fatima. Bro, can you please shout out my girl Fatima for the best Christmas gift ever? And yeah, he got a bottle of what looks like bro trip or vlog day. I think that's vlog day. And he got a smoke alien and a red recoil. You are absolutely shouted out. That is a freaking awesome Christmas gift. You and your girl are both shouted out. I want to do a quick update from a shout out that happened a while back. Uh, Hunter wrote back to me and said, Hey Grim, I don't know if you remember me, but my little sister, Bela, uh, you gave my little sister Bela a shout out. I just wanted to let you know that it made her weak. I hope she, uh, I hope it's okay, but I'm going to give you an update on her treatment. Um, she is taking the chemo very well, and her cancer is dying off fast. But she had so much cancer that she still has two and a half years worth of chemo treatments. Two and a half years worth of chemo treatments. But she is determined to beat the cancer. Anyway, thanks again for the shout out. Uh, you should have seen her light up. Um, absolutely. Let's shout her out again, both Hunter and Bela. You are both shouted out. Keep fighting that good fight. That's a lot of chemo, and I know that that's not a wonderful experience to go through, but she sounds like a, like a trooper, and uh, if she's determined to beat the cancer, then obviously she has my whole support. Uh, she has all of my subscribers' full support. I think I can speak for you guys when I say yes, Beat that cancer, Bela. Just beat it. Thank you so much, Hunter, for the updates. I asked Hunter to update me, you know, uh, as time goes on as to uh, what, uh, you know, how she's doing. I'd like to, I'd like to know those things. Um, got a shout out here from Greg. Uh, Hi, my name is Greg, and you can use my name if you read this in a vlog. I was wondering if I could get a shout out for my wife of 15 years, Jen. I celebrated my one year vape anniversary in December. No more cancer sticks for me. She has supported me the whole way, even though she is not a vapor or a smoker herself. And on top of it for Christmas, she got me two new setups, a purple Minikin V2 with a green recoil RDA, Joker setup, and also a Paraxis Banshee with a 24 millimeter Goon RDA. That's amazing. What an awesome wife I have. She deserves so much more than a shout out for putting up with me and our four kids. But nonetheless, a shout out would go a long way. Yeah. Yeah, that's like wife of the century right there. And you guys know me, one of my favorite things in the world is having a couple that one of them vapes and one of them doesn't. A couple, whether it's your, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your life partner, whatever, one of them vapes and one of them does neither. And having one support the other, uh, you know, through this journey, like, Yes, vape. I will support you vaping. Uh, that's that's love. You know what I mean? I think that's one of my favorite things of all time. So, Greg, 
boom, you are definitely shouted out. And Jen, boom, wife of the century right there. You are absolutely both shouted out. Uh, keep going. Stay married. Uh, hug your kids and uh, just, just be in love. That's one of my favorite things. Karen. Karen wrote to me uh, just real quickly and said, Nick, my name, my name is Karen. Yes, it is Karen. Nick, my birthday is January 3rd. Hoping I can get a shout out. Coming up on my two-year vapeversary on the 15th. So January 15th, a lot of vapeversaries. My vapeversary is in January. A lot of people vapeversaries are in January because freaking New Year's resolutions, right? So definitely, Karen, you are absolutely shouted out. Happy birthday and happy vapeversary on the 15th. So Maddie, I believe Maddie works for Bonsai Vapors, but she wrote to me and said, hey, Nick, I really want to go on this mission trip to help the kids and families in Romania. Could you talk about this in your vlog or maybe post it to your Facebook? Even one dollar will help. So she has a GoFundMe for uh, Bucharest, Romania. Uh, she's going to be repairing family houses, repairing a house of family of six currently living in an old hospital building. She is going to be visiting orphanages. Uh, I will be going with a group from my friend's church. I need all the support I can get to make this trip happen. I have had the funds, if I have the... I have to have the funds by March 5th. Hi, I can't read right now. I have to have the funds by March 5th, 2017. Uh, your funds will go to getting to Rome getting me to Romania and supplying me to make gifts for the kids in the orphanage. Um, absolutely. You know what, Maddie? That's rad. Uh, she has a GoFundMe link. I'll put a link down in the description to uh, Maddie's GoFundMe. Um, she's trying to raise 2000 bucks, but you know what I mean? Every little bit helps. I, I, I don't mind helping out people. I don't mind donating 20 bucks, 30 bucks here and there to just help people out in their life of mission. Because I know that there were so many times in my life, so many times in my life where I really needed help with something, where I had a goal that I wanted to accomplish and I really needed help. And I always refused to ask for help. And there's no shame in asking for help. And I wish back then that there was something like a GoFundMe or, you know, I wish I had asked people for help in order to get to these goals or to, you know, do these things that I wanted to do. So absolutely, um, I'll post a link down in the description. If you guys are interested in helping Maddie get to Romania, then you are, uh, you are definitely shouted out, Maddie. Do I have any other ones? Yes, I got this one from Jeff. We're going to wrap this up with Jeff. He wrote to me and says, my name is Jeff. Feel free to use my name. I live here in Asheville, North Carolina, and I've been vaping for a year now. And I have a really good friend that I worked the buddy system with. We quit smoking together as we both have young families and he is having a new addition to his family next week. So I'm wondering if I can get a shout out from my very good friend, Adam Banks, if possible. Uh, he has been an important part of my success and I hope I have been in his. We both watch your channel as well as a couple of others religiously and I can't think of a better way to surprise him than with something to show my bro and thanks for his support as well as congratulate him on his very soon to be new baby. Thanks for all you do for the community and protecting our right to be smoke free. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff, you are shouted out. What was your buddy's name? Did you say your buddy's name? Uh, he just said, I have a really good friend that I've worked the buddy system with. New addition to his family next week. Adam. Oh, okay. His name's Adam. Adam. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You are shouted out. Jeffrey, you are shouted out. Jeff and Jeff and Adam, you're absolutely shouted out. And congratulations, Adam, uh, on your soon to be birth of a new baby. Birth of a new baby. That reminds me that I do have another shout out to do. This was a screen capture from Facebook. Matt wrote to me, uh, he posted in the Namber Juice Facebook group and said, anyway, my little guy can get a fist bump and a shout out on the vlog or Tuesday Bro Tuesday, maybe one for his mama, Jen, for being so awesome and for giving me the okay to name him Anakin. The force is strong with him. I know he's not an authentic, my little clone. Born this morning, been a crazy day, Anakin. I'm going to edit out your last name out of that picture, but Anakin, th th absolutely. Matt, Jen, and Anakin, you are all just the most shouted out. Just really, really shouted out. Congratulations. That's uh, that's fantastic. Congratulations, Matt and Jen. That's very cool. So we're going to wrap up this... Uh, we're going to wrap up this shout out segment and we're going to jump right into some actual, actual, actual first impressions. 
So the first first impression I have to do is for this right here. Uh, I opened it a few days ago, but I haven't opened the box yet. This is the Fuchai 213 from Sigeli. They did the Sigeli 213 and the Fuchai, and then I guess they kind of mashed those together, and now it's the Fuchai 213. I'm interested to try this out. Um, I've always had some pretty good luck with the Sigeli mods. Um, I used to love the original Sigeli 100 and 150. 50 watts. I liked the Sigeli 213 quite a bit. I bought one um, because I really wanted to to buy it, and uh, this Fuchai should be a thing. Oh, Sigeli loves what's with Sigeli and the sleeves? Sigeli and the silicone sleeves. Sigeli and the tail of the silicone sleeve. That could be a children's book. First things first, as we get that sleeve off of there, this actually is a 213. I mean, it looks exactly the same as a 213, does it not? It looks exactly the same. I actually really like the way this looks. That is looking fancy. Uh, it says, warning, never use damaged or deformed batteries. Good advice, Sigeli, good advice. I'm gonna peel this sticker off here. Does come with a mini USB. I'm gonna keep the instruction manuals, but I'm not gonna keep that USB charger. In fact, do I need to keep this? Is anybody going to be really upset if I throw away the silicone sleeve? I don't want it. I don't want it. Ah, okay, I'll keep it. I don't want it. So let's get some batteries in here. Positive, negative, closes like the Sigeli, lights up and says Fuchai, and oh, it has a very nice, colorful display. Would you look at that? Can you see that colorful display? Why am I talking like this? Can you appreciate the color of this display? Can you see it? How it's it's multicolored and the wattage is in green and then there's like a temperature color wheel over here. Puffs is in yellow. And then when you press this as check atomizer in red, it looks. I mean, that is a that is a nice display. Good job, Sigeli. Now what the crap? What am I going to put on this? Mage GTA, why not? Mage GTA is great and it's just a great thing and it kind of looks really cool on there. So it's gonna read my resistance, is it? Yep, 0.28. So I'm gonna turn this wattage up. It does not up uh, does not, you know, change in one watt increments. It does point increments. So what are you going to do? 48 watts? I don't remember what I had, I, what that nugget I had it set to. Sure, that's working. That's fine. Wow, that's cool. The fit and finish on this is really nice. It feels a little bit slippery. It would be nice if maybe this was like, I don't know, textured in some way, but I really, really like the clean look of this. The black with the gunmetal gray on there, Really clean look, really nice display. Okay, you can three clicks gets you to a menu. You can change between custom TCR, stainless steel, nickel, titanium, or regular old power mode, and that's what we're gonna leave it in. It shows you, okay, so that color wheel is, yeah, one second, two puffs, 3.7 volts, 12 amps. It tells you the amps it's drawing from your battery or the amperage left in your batteries. Uh, oh, the amperage left in each individual cell. That's really nice. 3.7 volts, 0.28 ohms. That's a really nice display. That is a really nice display. It's got that same button from the Sigeli 213. It's just a little tiny, tiny little very, you hear the clicks happening? Very little clicky guy. Oops, I locked it. Oh, how did I lock it? And now it's permanently locked. So how do I unlock it? Uh -huh, uh. Five times within three seconds. I was doing that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm, I'm definitely pressing it more than five times in one in three seconds. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now it's going. Wow, that was weird. I don't know. For some reason it locked and then I couldn't unlock it again and I was getting confused. Really dig that clicky button though. Really nice clicky button. Good. That's cool, man. Good job. Good on you, Sigeli. Sigeli Fuchai 213, and yes, I'm gonna keep the silicone sleeve so I can talk about it later in a video. But let's uh, put that to the side and let's actually open some freaking vape mail. I'm just going to grab whatever is on top here and we're going to open it. Oh, this is coil art. This is something from coil art. 
something from Coil Art. Yeehaw, I hope this isn't something I have to friggin' build. Mage Combo RDTA RDA. Oh man, why did you do that? Why did you do that? <sighs> why did you do that? Well, you know what? That's fine. I've always said don't half ass two things, whole ass one thing. Actually, I didn't say that. Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation said that. I don't like things that do two things mediocrely as opposed to doing one thing really well. The Mage GTA on its own, on this Sigeli, is great. It's a good tank. And that's all it is, is a tank. And it does one thing and it does it really well. What happens sometimes when you get into these things that are like two things in one or three things in one, it does all of them kind of mediocrely and not, not really well. But hey, they sent me two. It looks like the Azeroth. I mean, it, it just looks like the Azeroth. Looks a really lot like the Azeroth. It's got uh, a better posts. It's got better posts on top. It's still got that. It actually, the deck on it uh, really looks a lot like that Turk RDA. But I'm assuming I can unscrew this. I can maybe take off this tank. How do I convert it into an RDA? Oh, well that's weird. Okay, I can't believe I need instructions for this. Mage combo, RDTA and RDA. Uh, there's no instructions on how to change this into a dripper and I don't see, that's 510 threaded, but there's no way you'd use that as a dripper. It just has giant juice flow holes into the bottom. Is confused, coil art, is confused, does not compute. I can take the, I can take the, the posts off. <laughs> no problem there, no problem getting these posts off. Be careful, there's a tiny little peak insulator, little pin comes out the bottom. How does this become, oh, here's the pieces. Here's the pieces I was missing. Oh, and it does also come with a velocity style deck as well. And then it has this base piece right here, which I'm assuming, I think uh, instructions on actually how to do this included in the box would have been a great idea, Coil Art. Just a heads up, that would have been a great idea. <laughs> so that's how it becomes a dripper. And now it's a little tiny dripper guy. I think I did all of that right, except the bottom is not sitting on there very flat. This little piece right here doesn't like to, doesn't like to go where it's supposed to go. It's just this little tiny piece of metal that you screw onto these threads. So normally it would be like this. You screw these threads into this tube and then it's a tank and you, you know, you put the glass on there and you screw it together or you take this base, which looks like it has a rut, like a little O-ring nestled in there. Interesting. That's not a, the prettiest looking thing, but it, see, this is an example of something that could have been a, could have been just a really good RDTA I mean, it's basically the Azroth RDTA, but you could have just left well enough alone and had it been an RDTA and then not worry about converting it into like a substandard RDA. Does that make any sense? Anyway, just spitballing off the top of my head. Obviously, this is something that if we want to vape right now, we're going to have to build. So, fuck it. We have to build it. So I got this all built and wicked up. I used uh, Origin Vape coils. Where did the where did the package go? Origin Vape coils. These are transformer Canthal coils. It looks to me like a single core 24 gauge Canthal wire with ribbon around it. It's a really, I don't know, it's an interesting wire, but it was easy enough to build, easy enough to glow easily. These, the, the default posts on here are spring loaded. So when you unscrew them, the clamp just opens right up nice and wide. And I've got it all wicked up here. It's just wicked so that the wicks are just kind of barely poking through the bottom like I like on an RDTA. And what I'm noticing is there is no juice filling uh, port, no juice filling hole or anything. There's, there's, when this is all assembled, the only way to get juice into your tank is to go through one of the wick holes. And that just seems super weird to me. There's no, there's no place to fill the juice on here, or you can unscrew this maybe, and then blow your juice in that way? I don't know, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I've been wanting to vape that uh, 
Yogi Granola Bar e-liquid again. It it went out of a mod and now it's back, but I just want to fill up this tank with that Yogi e-liquid because uh, it was really very, very quite nice. So I'm going to keep this tank level and I'm going to fill it up off camera. You can't see what's happening, but I assure you I'm filling up a tank right there. Fill, 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 fill. We're going to go right to the top. We're going to go right to the edge. And then I'm going to screw this on. I guess that's how you fill it? It seems so weird to fill it that way. Tanks together and there is juice in there and now I'm just going to juice up these coils and wicks and finally, finally, we will vape this. Vapors. I also want to test out this Yogi e-liquid in a tank. I've never tried it in a tank. It's only ever been in a dripper. It does have sweetener in it and it does turn your coils and your cotton quite dark quite quickly. So let's put this airflow on here. It has, the airflow has Kennedy style airflow in and up, and then it has regular RDA like straight on style airflow. And I guess you kind of have to use both of them. You can't really use just one or the other. Um, that's kind of a bummer. Oh no. Okay. So let's turn off that top airflow. Let's turn that all off and we'll just use the Kennedy style airflow. So basically this is an Azroth. RDTA that has Kennedy style airflow and you can convert into a kind of horrible looking RDA. But Kennedy style airflow is always nice. Let's give it a shot. This came out to 0.28 ohms. I have it set to 72 watts. It's giving me 4.5 volts of electricity. Nice. Smooth airflow. Nice vape. Good flavor. I've got all the airflow except the Kennedy turned off right now. Just, this is going on just Kennedy style airflow. Really good. Really nice. And you can even turn that Kennedy airflow. Let's turn it off like halfway. A little bit warmer of a vape. Let's open it back up. Let's open up this top airflow. Oh, okay. I see how it works. Is that a single coil mode? No, that's not single coil mode. I'm gonna need to fiddle around with this airflow a little bit. It doesn't look like I can get, oh, I can get all of them open. Okay, that's literally zero resistance. Zero resistance happening right now in this airflow. So many clouds bro clouds happening right now. Whole lot of clouds, bro clouds. I like it with just the Kennedy open. In fact, I kind of like it. No, you can't do that. I wish I could just do like the two middle holes and the Kennedy, but as it stands, that's, that's not an option right there. So let's do two holes and the Kennedy. That's way too loud. I'm just gonna go just Kennedy, just Kennedy. Really dig that juice. All right, it's a really good RDTA. It's not so great as an RDA. It just looks weird. There's a big gap at the bottom, but coil art, mage combo. I'm gonna vape it. I'm gonna vape it just a whole bunch. Now, wow, that was like the longest vape mail first impressions thing ever. So let's get another package open. I don't know why I'm putting all these tools away because I'm guessing chances are I might need to build something again. Ugh. Not taped down anymore. What do we got from Anakin? We got uh, more slipstream coils. We got the Cool Fire Ace complete vaping system in both black and stainless steel. Is this something that we want to see a first impressions on? Inakin has been sending me so much stuff lately. All right, which one should we open? Black or silver? Vote now. Press the screen to vote. Boop, 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 boop. Actually, I mean, it's YouTube. Of course, that's not going to work. Let's open the black. I don't know. I'm feeling dark. I'm feeling evil. So let's open the black and uh, see what this guy is all about. It looks like they went stylistically in design back to the original Cool Fire 4, which had that like brushed metal look that I love just oh so much. Oh, it's a tiny guy. <gasps> it's a tiny guy. It's a tiny little cool fire. Oh, this makes me so happy. I I love this already. I just wanna vape this. And I actually don't even need to set up this slipstream tank because I still have my Inokin Eye Taste Chroma here. 
and I can just put this slipstream tank on here and have like a white black sort of dark side stormtrooper matchy look going on. Coil head's a little bit gurgly because I haven't used it in a while. Oh, you! I'm adjusting the volts. Wow, that's old school. Let's try 5 volts. I wonder if this 0.18 can hold up to 5 volts or 0.81 can hold up to 5 volts. Success! Look at this. Look at this little cool guy. This is just... This is so cool. I can't think of another word other than cool. It's just... It's just really cool. Having used the Cool Fire 4 a lot and then having used the Cool Fire 4 Plus a lot, having a tiny, tiny version, it's great. It reminds me, it's like, you know, when you go to the liquor store, like you go to a BevMo and they have like, here's a tiny little Crown Royal, here's a tiny little Jim Beam, here's a tiny little Jack Daniels, I just named three whiskeys. Here's a tiny little Jose Cuervo tequila guy. That's what this reminds me of. After seeing the big version for so long, seeing the tiny version, Version, you kind of go, oh, it's just so cute and tiny. Let's see what the, let's see, oh, nope, that's one puff I took. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to need the instruction manual for this, but right now I'm adjusting the volts, which is old school. We, we, so we've been adjusting wattages for years, but I have this set to five volts. It's a point eight ohm coil at five volts, little slipstream tank. This is the same tank, only in black. This is a black slipstream, and then this is a white slipstream that came with the Inokin Chroma mod right here. I've just got it on my cool fire. Look at this little guy. I can even take a decently long drag with that. I dig this Inokin and, and, and I think it's cool and I think that you're a cool company and I like Inokin. I'm going to get out the instruction manual. I'm probably going to throw the rest of this away. Let's keep the coil heads. Oh, Inokin stickers. What am I going to put Inokin stickers on? Oh, this is a different drip tip. This is a spare drip tip. Hey, that's cool. So you don't have to use the, uh, the black drip tip. Spare drip tip, spare coil head, the rest is getting thrown away, and I'm gonna keep the user manual so I can, you know, actually function this, work it correctly, and I'm gonna keep the tank. I'm gonna keep the tank, I'm gonna keep all that stuff, and then I got a silver one. We're gonna put this in the giveaway pile. Slipstream coil, Canthal, Canthal, 0.8 ohms, so two sets of Canthal coil heads, which is great. You can't really tell from looking at the packaging that it's a little guy. Like, it looks like a normal size mod, but I guess when you think of the size of the slipstream tank, then yeah, this little little cool fire ace kind of makes sense. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this a lot, Inakin. Enjoying it a lot. <laughs>
holy crap, that is ugly and really uncomfortable to hold in your hand. And it's got my least favorite button of all time right there, those little BB style buttons. But look at this. This is a mod that looks like a hard drive. Uh, it's all open. This is so fucking uncomfortable to hold. It beeps. Holy crap, did you hear that? It beeps. Okay, that means there's no, no atomizer attached. Yeah, try, try getting this through TSA. What's that homemade looking beeping box you have in your bag? Oh no, that's just my, my Smoant raw box. Warning, the raw box is waterproof only in circuit, not the whole device. Nano waterproof only for spilling, not daily life, not for using underwater for a long time. Do not throw the device in water or wash it. Do not take the device apart, neither pound it by hardware. Don't pound it by hardware. It may be destroyed due to short circuit. All right, well, this box is definitely getting thrown away. Let's read the instructions here. Okay, so it goes from uh, green is fully charged, blue is less, blue is 80%, blue level is 81%, red level is 30%, and it cuts off at 5%. Low battery protection, it runs on a LiPo. When less than 5% power, the green LED will flash 15 times in a row and the buzzer will ring three times. Okay, it'll fire down to a 0.1, so not lower than a 0.1. It's unregulated, I believe. No, it's regulated. When the PCB board temperature is 60%, overuse protection, Power saving mode. Handmade, 100% waterproof. So that's what I'm interested about is because all, all, all RDAs, RTAs, and RDTAs, and whatever tanks and atomizers you can think of, will get juice in places that they're not supposed to get juice. Even my beloved recoil RDA will get, I've seen molecules of juice like around the bottom and around the sides and it gets messy. This is all open. There's really big gaps right here on the sides by the 510. So if I had a tank that was just pissing juice all over the place, that's just gonna go right in there, right in the circuit boards. And even if it's waterproof, and even if you got juice in here and it continued to work, you're still gonna have to look at gross, smudgy juice drips on the inside of this. This is transparent plastic right there. Transparent plastic right there. I wanna put something on here so freaking bad. This is the most weirdest, most weirdest thing ever. So this little switch right here that I can switch back and forth, right? This little switch right here. When it's in soft mode, that's basically running it in parallel. It's full battery output, I'm assuming at around four volts, probably between 3.7 and four volts. Switch up in the High mode position is constant voltage output of 100 watts. 100 watts, no matter what, and that's what you vape, is 100 watts. It's either unregulated, 3.7 volts, or 100 watts output. Um, what the fuck do I even put on here? I know, let's put the Goon Low Pro on there. Okay, so I'm gonna try this on soft right now because this was previously, the Goon Low Pro was running on a Mac mod, right? Mac mod, nice, nice cool little vape there. So I'm assuming this will be the same as running the Goon Low Pro on a Mac mod. Beautiful, that is a beautiful, beautiful vape. Nice, consistent power output. This box smells awful. If you've ever like opened up a computer or rebuilt a PC and you know when you tear open that like cellophane package and you smell new computer parts, that's exactly what this smells like. And I, I've never noticed that with any other mod ever this just smells awful like new computer parts and I'm getting, I'm picking up that flavor in the juice. So that means if I flip this down, it's going to run it at 100 watts, 100 watts. This is a 0.18. It's now it's running it at 100 watts. Feels the exact fucking same. Okay, 
I'm pressing the button right now. It hit some sort of protection and it stopped me from vaping. So if I switch this back to soft, and there's, oh, there's a light display on the inside too. Okay, Smoant. Okay. That's fucking weird. This is just a fucking weird mod, man. And it smells really bad. Here's my concerns. It's really uncomfortable to hold. I mean, look at this. It's super uncomfortable to hold. You can feel the plastic edges are really super sharp. A nice little bevel on there would have gone a long way. It's really uncomfortable to hold in your hand because these bottom corners really protrude out from the body of it. So it's kind of uncomfortable to hold in your hand. I'm really worried about juice getting in there. Not that I think that it'll short anything out because that's proven not to be the case in the past, but just now there's gonna be smudges and like gross juice on the inside of this of this plastic housing. It's vaping really well with this Goon Low Pro on here. Vaping really well. So, interesting Smoant. Very, very, very interesting. As with all my first impressions, I say this a million times, I am gonna need to spend way more time with this before it gets a full review or enters the Tuesday Bro Tuesday queue. But yeah, the Smoant Raw Box. The Smoant Raw Box looks like an external hard drive and even has a friggin' light, light show on there. Three LEDs, that is insane. That is, that is, this is a, this is a novelty vape. Just gonna go ahead and say it. I feel like this is really a, a very much a novelty vape that it's not, I'm not gonna take this out when I leave the house and I'm not gonna take it to like a vape event because it's really uncomfortable to hold. It's really kind of cumbersome and wonky. It's got a lipo on the inside, um, interesting. Very interesting, Smoant. And every time I take a drag, I can smell that like computery circuit board smell. Ugh, ugh, boo, boo, boo. All right, last package. Please don't be anything I have to rebuild. Please don't be anything I have to rebuild. Black, jet black, gold, and silver. Don't know who this is from. And if you say look on the DHL packing slip, it just says some factory in Shenzhen, China. It never ever says like coil art or Wismac or Smoant. It just says this company in China. All right, what do we got? I don't know. Oh, this is the uh, Snow Wolf 200 watt. Okay, hey, cool. I'm actually excited about this. Which one should I open? I have black, gold, stainless steel, or jet black. Oh, jet black sounds kind of cool, like it's gonna be a matte black, huh? Let's open that one. Come on, jet black, look cool. Okay, comes wrapped up, sure thing. Yeah, jet black, no, okay, okay. So black is probably the matte one. The jet black, kind of like the jet black iPhone is like a shiny, shiny black. Is this a dual 18650? Yes, it is, wow. Okay, that's actually really impressive. Uh, let me get two batteries in here. Okay, it's a touch screen. Hmm, I don't want it on nickel mode. Why is it in nickel mode? I don't want it on nickel mode. I don't even know what to put on this right now. Let's put the red recoil on it, cause why not? Okay, so I have the red recoil on there and when I attached the atomizer, it asked me what mode I wanted to be in. Before it was in nickel mode and I didn't know how to change it, when you plug something on, it asks you, is this a new coil? And no matter what you say, yes or no, it's gonna ask you what, what mode you want. So I just put it into regular wattage mode and I turned this down to 71 watts. And what I've realized is, It'll vape, 71 watts, perfect. On a point two, great. But maybe I don't want this at 71 watts. I can adjust it up. These are like touch sensors right here. These are just touch sensors, but they don't lock. You can just keep accidentally pressing them. If I'm grabbing this out of my pocket, I'm like, you know, like flipping it around or you put your finger on there and you accidentally hold this, it's it's knocking my wattage way, way down. And I don't know if there's a way to lock those. And not having the ability to lock your wattage up and down, especially when it's like so touchy like this, like these touch sensors work really well. You just go boom, 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 down, 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 up, up, up. So if I want to keep this at 75 watts, I don't know how to do that, so I'm reading the instruction manual. Okay, it says to lock the device, press the plus and the fire button at the same time. What? There is no plus. <laughs> There's only arrow right and arrow left. 
I'm assuming they mean the wattage up touch sensor right here. So let's turn that to the wattage that I want. Press fire in that at the same time. No, it's just firing. It's just firing. Press plus and the fire button at the same time. This can lock the device. The OLED will display system locked and the battery level. Press plus and the fire button at the same time and the OLED will display system unlocked and will go back to the main interface, which is before locking the device. This doesn't make any sense. It's just firing. Oh, come on, man. Oh, okay. I did it. Oh, but that's dumb. <laughs> Okay, that's dumb. That's dumb. Um, you have to kind of do a one-two. You press the up and then the fire and it'll lock it. It says system locked and now I can't do anything. But you don't even need to use that function because you can just five on, five off it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and now it's powered back on and it goes back to exactly where it was. One, two, three, four, five. Powered off. That locks it. There's no reason to have, oh, okay, that's dumb, that's dumb. What that should have done is lock your voltage up and down, which reading through this booklet, there is no way to lock your buttons. There's no way to avoid accidentally adjusting your buttons up and down. They do have a firmware upgrade mode in here, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that you'll be able to upgrade the firmware and be able to lock your wattage up and down because as it stands, you are not able to lock your wattage up and down. And that is really bad. I mean, right, like you can like, I'm aware of it. Maybe you're a type of person that checks your wattage every time you vape. I am not. I grab things out of my pocket and I vape them. And if suddenly I was like sitting there and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just whatever. This is a, this is a thing. I'm gonna vape. And I was holding down the like this plus button and it accidentally shot up to 200 watts, which it can do really quickly. And you take a vape on it. That is going to char the inside of your goddamn throat. Well, not char it. I mean, it'll just hurt. Okay, that's dumb. That's dumb, Snow Wolf. That's dumb, Lassimo. Snow Wolf. Uh, that's dumb. Sorry. Sorry, it's dumb. I want to put this at 75 watts and I want to leave it there. And I don't want to accidentally be able to adjust my wattage up and down. Otherwise, it looks fucking cool. The Jet Black looks super dope. These buttons work super dope. And it's a small little dual 18650 guy. And even right now, I'm adjusting my wattage down just from holding it. Stupid. That's stupid. Uh, I'm going to contact them and see if they have an upgrade for it because as it stands, I don't really want to use that right now. Um, I'm going to pop the batteries out of here. I just don't want to use this if I can accidentally adjust my wattage up and down. To me, that's a huge, huge fucking bummer. But uh, what are you going to do? You got some for giveaway, which is great. I'm going to be doing another thing. I'm also probably going to be doing a... Patreon um, for uh, giveaways. And I have a I have a way that I'm gonna work this, but I'm probably gonna be opening up a Patreon account soon, which should be super cool. And that's all my packages. That is all of my first impressions. Thank you. But yeah, seriously, that is gonna wrap up the first impressions. Uh, what I want to do right now before we get to the oh so fantastic comments of the week segment is I'm gonna do a retro vaping. So this right here isn't going to be so much of a retro vaping as it's going to be more of a, hey, remember that freaking stupid device segment. And I don't have a bumper or music for that, but this is going to be, hey, remember that stupid freaking device. Anybody remember this? <laughs> remember when I reviewed this? This was... This was like in 2015, I think. And uh, yeah, your mom's box mod. Your mom's box mod. So funny. Your mom's box mod was a dual parallel unregulated 18650 device, which on paper, a wooden dual parallel 18650 device. I heard those words together and I just went, that's something I would be into, especially in 2015, really would be into that. But... He pulled this out of his bag and it looked like, 
I don't know, some sort of like seventh grade wood shop project. It's a little bit big and it's a little bit uncomfortable to hold. And then on the front, it was your mom's box. Pow. Mod. And it's got this like deep laser engraving and it's like burned on the wood and it looks actually kind of super cool. And then when I got into the inside, they just use Sharpie. Number 52, Sharpie, positive and negatives on the battery sled. Sharpie, number 52. Like you go to all this trouble to make a box mod out of wood and you get it laser engraved your mom's box in like this cool comic booky looking font and then it says pow and it looks nice and it's got like dark and and little bit of knurling right there and it says pow you go to all this trouble and then you you serialize them with a sharpie what the hell and siri thought i was talking to her it even says you serialize it with a sharpie but seriously plus the insides eh it's nothing to write home about. The battery sled is all off center. You can tell they just used a fuck ton of hot glue in there to get this battery sled in there. Big thick copper wires though. Like I'll give them that. Big thick copper wires and a MOSFET. This could have been probably two centimeters shorter because there's just this big long copper wire going up to the 510 pin. Anyway, I'm gonna put some batteries in here and uh, yeah, we're gonna vape this freaking thing. Let's get my newest of the new and put it on this dumb thing. We're gonna throw the Goon Low Pro on here because I was running this on a Mac and it's, uh, it's about a 0.18, I believe. So we're gonna run it on this, uh, oh yeah, there it's happening. We're gonna run it on your mom's box. Oh, this is so funny. I'm gonna post a link down in the description to my original your mom's box review so you can see just how under the bus I threw this. The fit and finish on it is awful. It's like they constructed the box and then they forgot to put a door on there. So they made a bunch of doors separately that didn't go with the original box boxes because it doesn't line up on the bottom. The top, it's all wobbly and sideways, like it sits flush up here, but as you go down, it just is up and weird and at an angle. Same thing on this side, and it's it's clearly a completely different, uh, I'm dripping. It's clearly a completely different piece of wood. The button they used, awful squishy button that you have to like push into the housing. It's not like a nice clicky MyTech switch. It's one of those like squishy weird buttons that I hate, but we're gonna vape it. I'm gonna vape your mom's box. And you know what? It's actually pretty good. <laughs> That's the best part. It's so dumb. This thing is so dumb. And this is something that I will never get rid of because next year I'm gonna open this same vape box in my closet and go, oh yeah, I remember your mom's box. I remember where I was when I got this. It was at Vape Bash. I remember using it. I remember chuckling at first and then over time going, God, that is so fucking stupid. It's really hastily, poorly thrown together, but it's a dual parallel, unregulated, MOSFET protected box mod, and it works exactly as it should. <laughs> Good times with the Your Mom's Box. Good times. So we're gonna set this to the side. That was the retro vaping, or now, as that segment is known, Hey, remember that stupid fucking mod or whatever I called it. I don't even remember. But right now what I want to do, ooh, favorite comments of the week. I literally have so many favorite comments of the week. It's almost ridiculous. <laughs> it is almost ridiculous. So let's start this off. Comment of the week number one. Uh, uh, as, as usual, I don't remember what video this was left on. Um, oh, this was on uh, this was on my last Tuesday Bro Tuesday <laughs> video. This was on my last Tuesday Bro Tuesday video. A guy named uh, V Rod thirteen V Rod wrote, "I started vaping and now I'm addicted to skydiving. Fucking gateway drugs, LMFAO. Come on, people, get it together." <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I really, I genuinely chuckled at that because I was talking about that article where the lady was talking about how nicotine addiction can lead you to multiple other addictions. 
Um, got another favorite comment of the week. I believe this was sent from Michael or Nico. I don't quite remember. Um, someone, Chris Flippin, left this comment that said, put that big, nice head in your mouth, Nick. Do it. Do it for me. <laughs> creepy. Super creepy. Super, super creepy. Um, Omi the Destroyer left a comment and said, I like my women like how I like my airflow. Loose and swooshy. Ah, uh, yeah. Waka waka. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, got another favorite comment of the week here. Um, this was just a dad joke that someone left. Metalhead500 said, Why was the cat scared of the tree? Because of its bark. Oh, really good. Really good dad joke. Comment of the week number four. Uh, left by a guy. We're going to call him M. He just said, Poser faggot. Sure. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for your contributions. And then, and then the most amazing thing happened. A guy that we're just going to call Jay. He went around to all of my videos, like six different videos, and left all of these wonderful comments all over the place. And I'm just going to read them to you rapid fire. Grim Gay. I really hope you quit YouTube. Shut up. You get too much dollar sign dollar sign FR YouTube ho. You are boring. Sell out, you stealth vaping bitch. Metal sucks too. Fuck you. Go fuck rip trippers in the ass. I won't buy your juice bro juice or any of your bullshit I used to like. Fuck off, bro. Fuck off, ooh, boring bitch. Unsubscribed. Do you and rip trippers fuck each other in the ass? Fucking sell out hoes. <laughs> what? Wow. So... <laughs> <laughs> that guy's the maddest guy. Yeah, he's so mad. He's so mad at, at a vape video. <laughs> he's so mad. Oh, God, that made me laugh so hard. And I don't know if he was, like, really trying to go for comment of the week, like, with one of those. But those were up across multiple, multiple videos. I make it a point every day to get into the comments of all of my YouTube videos and try to respond to as many people as I can. And I kept seeing this guy all over the place. In fact, the first one he left, Grim Gay, I was like, oh, that's a, that's a great comment of the week, Jay. And then his name's not Jay. It's just the letter J. I don't even remember what his fucking name was. And I was like, that's a great comment of the week. So I screen captured it. And then I slowly, as I was going throughout all my comments, kept seeing more and more from him. So I screen captured all of them. And those are the only ones, those are the ones that I found. I can't even imagine where they are across any other videos, but uh, that guy went bananas. So fuck you very much. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this vlog up. Let me take a quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. My my office is a mess. That's, that's what's happening right now. My office is a mess. Nope, I think we're all good. So what I'm going to do is grab my Segeli Fu Chai 213, my brand new Coil Art RDA, RDTA mage thing guy, and I'm going to vape and I'm going to sit and edit video. But that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. First vlog of the new year. Feels really good to be back. Uh, everything is going to get much more consistent this year. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of travel planned. I am going to be gone a little bit towards the end of January, but uh, I hopefully I'll still have some content for you guys. And uh, yeah, you know what I mean? 2017, it's getting off to a rough start. But I am determined to make the best of it. I am the most optimistic person that I can be right now, even with a sprained ankle and even with Fu Manchu canceling their show in San Diego that I already had tickets to. I'm still optimistic for 2017. So we got to stick together. We got to be a united front against these ridiculous vaping regulations. And most of all, we have to not, not 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 smoke cigarettes, right? I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Put all this shit aside. That's what it is all about. So thank you so much, everybody. Again, the the, the vaping awards, the that was awesome. Uh, the recoil RDA being number three, that's awesome. I have, uh, I'm convinced that I have literally the best subscribers on the internet. I mean, the best subscribers on the internet. So give yourself all a fist bump. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And as always, like I always say, let's keep on vaping.